Hello folks, welcome to iPraxa. This is our PSD file that we will convert into an HTML5 web page. So let's proceed. First of all, let's create a new folder on the desktop for our project, and name it Sample Project, which will be the root folder. Inside that folder make two new folders and name them as PSD and XHTML respectively. Then go inside the XHTML folder and create one more folder and name it as common. Now open that common folder and create three new folders and name them CSS, JS, and font phase respectively. Now let's create a new HTML5 document using Adobe Dreamweaver CS6, and save it as index.html inside the folder named as xhtml inside the root folder. Then create a new CSS file and save it as style CSS inside the CSS folder, which is located in the folder named as common. Now coming back to the HTML5 file, write the project name inside the title tag, and link the style CSS file using the link tag. As we have successfully created both our HTML5 and CSS files, we can now create a new folder for images inside the folder named as common. So go ahead and do the same, and name the folder as image. Then save all your required images inside this particular folder. Now save the JavaScript files inside the folder named as JS, and to make the CSS3 work smoothly on Internet Explorer 7 and 8, save the file pie.htc inside the xhtml folder. After saving all those files in their respective folders come back to the HTML and link all your JavaScript files. Then go back to the PSD design file and measure the width for the div with a class of wrapper. Once it's done, we can now start coding our design in HTML5. First of all, make a div with a class of wrapper, then place the logo using the image tag, and link it using the anchor tag and also give it an ID of logo. Now let's make the navigation bar for which we will use the nav. UL, LI and anchor tags. Inside the LI tags place all the required navigation tab and turn them into hyperlinks using the anchor tags. We will now move to the CSS and write the common or standard CSS code, which includes the margin, image, field set, focus, body and wrapper. Then define the header section too, and also declare the navigation bar. Once you have done all this precisely, save both HTML and CSS files, and check the preview in web browser. Look, right now everything seems working just like we want it to be. So go back to the HTML now, and make the banner container inside it. For heading, and other text, we will use the H2 and paragraph tags respectively.
Now let's measure the width for the left banner section. Then go back to HTML file and create a new section tag for the right banner section or the slider container. And close all the open section and div tags. As we have already made the section tag for our slider container, we can now easily write its entire code, and also place all our slider images. Now it's time to place the slider controls, which includes the left and right arrows. So using the anchor tag place both of them one by one. And after completing this, Move to the CSS file, here, you can now define banner container, left banner and slider container respectively. Once you are done with this, Check the preview in the web browser and don't forget to check the anchor links to know if they are working or not. Moving back to the HTML. Create the body container. Then make a new section tag with a class of top underscore section. And place the heading inside the H2 tags, for images use the image tags. And for placing the text, use the paragraph tags. Now go to the CSS file, and declare the body container. Then in the PSD file, measure the width, margin and padding of the top section that you need to write next inside the CSS file. and check the HTML page and web browser. Now inside the HTML create a new section for the bottom container. Inside this bottom container section, make another section with a class of common underscore box, and use H2, paragraph and anchor tags for heading, text, and hyperlinks. For placing the contact address, make a new section tag with a class of common underscore box second, and give the heading inside an H2 tag and place the address inside a paragraph tag. Then for listing the phone, fax and email, create a new list using li tag inside the ul tag, and to add mail to for the email address, use the anchor tag. Now you need to adjust the closed section tags a little bit, so do that carefully. Once it's completed, go to the CSS file and declare the bottom section inside it.
for font family, you can check the PSD design file, and define the scene inside the CSS. Then declare the class of contact for an ordered list in common box. And check the preview in web browser. If everything seems working perfectly at your end, then go ahead and make the footer inside the HTML file. Again for font family font size, check the PSD file. Then inside the footer tag, create a new div with a class of wrapper. Now make a new section tag with an ID of menu, and create an unordered list or UL tag, and place all the footer navigation menu tabs using the LI tags inside it. To make them linkable, use the anchor tag. For social icons, make a new and ordered list or UL tag with a class of social underscore icon, and list all three social icons using the LI tags, and to link them with the appropriate social media pages. You can use the anchor tags. Then move to the CSS, and define the entire footer section inside it. Along with that, you should also observe the PSD file once again to check if we have missed something or not. If everything looks okay to you, then go ahead and declare the footer navigation using the unordered list or UL, LI or list and anchor tags. After completing the footer section, define the social icons width, position, margin, and also provide the respective social icon image path. Now you can check the HTML page in a web browser, and verify if the mouse hovering effect on social icons is working or not. If it's working perfect then go to the HTML file. and create a new UL tag with a class of bottom nav within the footer tag, and using the LI tags place the very last line of the text given in the PSD file that tells about the copyright, and other rights you have on your project. Then define the same class in CSS also. And if you need to know the font size and font family, you can check that on the PSD design file.
as of now our HTML and CSS coding is complete. You can check the preview in the web browser. Everything looks perfect. So let's validate the HTML5 code using W3C Online Validator. Great! Our HTML5 code is validated successfully. Now let's validate the CSS3 code. Perfect! Our CSS3 code is also validated successfully. Now go ahead and link the remaining font phase style sheet in the HTML. For CSS, you can generate the font face via an online font face generator and define it and save the file, and check the preview one final time in the web browser. Congratulations! You have successfully converted a PSD into an HTML5 web page using the CSS3. That's all for now. You can subscribe by Praxis channel on YouTube for more tutorials on PSD to HTML conversion. Thank you for watching, goodbye and good luck for your coding career ahead.